Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to learn about the depth first search. Now, what is the depth first search? The depth first search is just like the breadth first search, but instead of using a queue, it uses a stack. So um, it's obviously used in order to you know traverse um, a tree or a graph or any kind of graph. So it uses a stack. Now, what is the speciality of a stack? A stack is a data structure which basically, when you push something into the last one to be pushed in is supposed to be the first one which comes out. So if you have basically like a basket, you have a basket in which you put in fruits one above the other, the last fruit you put in is supposed to be the first fruit you take out. So the depth first search works in a similar fashion. So here we have this graph in which we have 0, 1, uh, 2 and 3, we have 4 nodes in, um, which are connected in some fashion. So if you see the node 0 is connected to 1 and 2, the node 2 is connected to 3 and 0, and the node 1 is connected only to 2. So how do you do this? How will you form or how will you do the DFS, that is the depth first search? As I said, you use a stack. So here I have uh, put up a stack and uh, this will basically collect our nodes as we go through them. So the first node we go is naturally going to be zero, right? So let's go there. Okay, so the first node, zero, we pushed inside the stack. Now what is the logical next step to be done? The logical next step to be done is we have to pop the stack. Take the last element and remove it. So which is the last element inside the stack right now? It is zero. So remove it. And that is the first element of our result. So once you pop the stack, what do you do? You, what you do is you take this element and see which elements it is connected to. So here, zero, the zeroth node is connected to two because there's an arrow to two and the node zero is connected to one because there's an arrow to one. So what you do next is you arbitrarily select one of these and put them both in the stack. You arbitrarily select the, the ones which you want inside, okay? That's how that works. So basically what you do is you put them inside the stack. Um, so I just said that the stack basically takes the last element you inserted and removes them from the stack, right? So which element will be removed in this case? It's obviously going to be two. So basically you take two, remove it from the stack, and you can also see that three has magically inserted itself inside here. What happened? So when you remove two from the stack, you check which element is 2 connected to. Now 2 is connected to 3 and 2 is connected to 0. But there is no 0 inside the stack again. That is because it's already visited. You do not put already visited elements inside the stack. Instead, I only selected 3 and put it in the stack. Okay, so what happens next? 3 is basically removed from the stack. Now if you see here, 3 is connected to itself. So it doesn't really have any routes uh, which connect it to something else. And basically, once you put three inside the stack, it's already going to be visited. So you don't need to put it back in the stack. Back in the stack. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how three comes out and you don't have to worry about that. And now you have one remaining in the stack and you basically remove it and that's done. So what is the basic concept we take away from this? The basic concept which we take away from this is that you select one element, you see what it is connected to, and once that element is inside and once it's popped, you take those elements and push them in and basically repeat the process over and over again. So let's now take a look at the code and see how this entire process works. We're going to use Python. Okay, so this is the code for the depth first search. So at the top, I have the adjacency matrix. Now, what is an adjacency matrix? You saw earlier in the presentation that we have a graph. Now, in order to represent that graph in a programmatic fashion, we need an adjacency matrix. So as you can see, uh, the first row over here is the name of the nodes. This is the name of the nodes. And this is basically the adjacency matrix in its entirety. Uh, you can see that the zero node and the zeroth node have a value of zero, which means that there is no edge connecting the zeroth node with itself. Uh, between the zeroth node and the first node, you have a one, which means that there is an edge between zero and one. So, so on and so forth. Basically, this is basically the entire graph, which we just, we just depicted inside the the presentation. The same graph is over here, which I have put inside a bidimensional matrix. So bidimensional matrix, because the name of the, the object over here is matrix. And this is just the, the, um, the parameters through which I will refer to the elements inside them. 
I also have an array called the visited array. This is actually a Python list, but I'm going to use it as a stack as well as an array. So that is, a, that is the awesome part about Python. You can use the same uh, data structure in different ways. Um, so the first step over here is add the start node to the stack. As you re remember, we had a start node uh, called the zeroth node, and we put that in the stack initially to start up the process of uh, the DFS. So uh, the, the start node is a node zero in this case. And so inside the stack, we just put zero. So that's how you do it in Python. Or you just put stack and this is a list and you say zero. That is the index of the zeroth node. Also, what you have to do is once the zeroth node is inside the stack, you basically have to tell the visited array, this array over here that, hey, I have the zeroth node and I'm, I have visited it. So just so flag it as one. So it's going to take the zeroth element, the index zero and flag it as one. So this indicates that the element has been visited and is ready to progress. Now what you're going to do is you're going to pop the stack. What I did over here is I popped the stack, but in this case, the stack is actually a list. So I popped the last element. So what am I doing here? I'm doing a length of stack minus one. What is the length of the stack? The length of the stack in this case is only one. So one minus one is zero. So I'm essentially popping the zeroth element, which is basically the last element because it's also the first element. So the first element and the last element are basically the same element. So you pop that element and you put that element in this uh, object called node and then you print it. So as you remember, the first element which we print is zero. Now this is going to be an infinite while loop, uh, which you're going to run until something breaks inside, as you can see. So what happens here? While true, okay, infinite while loop, infinite loop, all these are going to be executed until something breaks. Remember that you iterate over the total amount of nodes. So how do you do this? How do you go over every single node? As you remember, the total amount of nodes is actually four over here. So the visited array, the length of the visited array accurately depicts the amount of nodes we have inside the program. So uh, you have it for X in range of zero to length of visited. So basically X in this case will be going from zero to one minus the length of visited, which is which is in this case is uh, uh, four minus one, which is three. Always remember the for function in uh, in python goes from 0 to 1 minus this this uh, element over here so the length is 4 it will go from 0 to 3 which means it will include 0 1 2 and 3 so here you will check check if the route exists and that the node isn't visited so you check if there's a route from the current node to all the other nodes basically in this case the, the value of node will be the same and the value of x will change from 0 1 2 and 3 and it will check if there is a route which exists and also that the element is visited or not. And if there is, um, and, and if it is not visited, you basically visit it and you push that element inside the stack. So as you saw, uh, zero uh, was popped out and then you had one and two which were not visited and you pushed one and two arbitrarily inside the stack and you proceeded from there. So uh, then, you basically do this uh, for how many amount of times there are nodes and then you basically get a stack which is kind of full and you check over here if length of stack is zero and in this case it's probably not zero because one and two are inside the stack pop the element and and then you do go to, go to the else part which is pop the element from the stack so once you reach to the end of this you say pop the element so you use the same same uh, line you use over here you pop the last element and then you say print the node and then the whole function just repeats itself over and over again until the stack is completely empty and that's how this function works and that's about it um, so yeah I mean that's how this function works and that's how this method works. also remember that we did not implement an actual stack in this in this program I just made a link list a, a list uh, in Python and just uh, made it seem like it was a stack by using this function over here so yeah, I mean, that's about it. So thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to make an, a lot of new videos soon. And uh, I've been off for a while. Yeah, so yeah, that, that, that's how the DFS works. Always remember the DFS uses a stack instead of a queue. The BFS uses queue. Breadth first search uses queue. 
depth for your search uses stack and yeah the code will be in the description and thanks for watching uh, later guys